Mary Preer and her husband Leonard lived in Flint, Michigan. They owned Sweet Marie's Candy Store for many years before selling it. They then moved to Lennon, Michigan to retire. In 1990, Leonard passed away. In the years since his passing, Mary became a fixture in the small village. She was a devout Catholic and often attended church functions. Lennon residents remember seeing her walk from home to the town diner for lunch and dinner most days. On February 27, 1997, Michigan State Police K-9 teams, taking part in training in the area, found 88-year-old Mary's body in a wooded area near her residence. She had been beaten, strangled, and indecently assaulted. It was a crime that shocked the small Lennon community. Investigators collected DNA at the crime scene that belonged to the suspect. They also conducted hundreds of interviews to gain evidence in the case and followed up on dozens of leads. Quickly, they zeroed in on Michael Burr. He lived in a residence a short walk from Mary's house. Investigators took his DNA sample so that it could be stored, as DNA was not advanced enough at the time to confirm that his matched what was found at the crime scene. Unfortunately, investigators could not gather enough evidence to meet the probable cause standard necessary to charge him in the connection to the case. Recently, the Genesee County Police Department partnered up with Michigan State Police Crime Lab to finally help solve the case. In November of 2021, they were able to match the DNA found at the scene to that of Michael Burr. Genesee County Prosecutor David Layton said, The DNA evidence shows a 1 in 1.9 octillion chance that Michael was not responsible for what happened to Mary. Ultimately, what we all want here is closure for the victim's families, he said. We want closure because when you lose a loved one in such a brutal manner, it never goes away from your mind. You never have a peaceful day when you can't stop thinking about it. Michael is currently being held in Genesee County Jail without bond. He is now scheduled for a probable cause hearing in Genesee County District Court on November 24, 2021, when prosecutors will lay out the evidence against him. Seventeen-year-old Patricia Moreno lived in Malden, Massachusetts in 1991. She lived with her foster family in an apartment on Henry Street. This included her foster mother, the mother's two teenage daughters, and a boyfriend of one of the daughters, Rodney Daniels. At 3 a.m. on June 20, 1991, police responded to a call from the apartment where Patricia lived. There, they found her face down on the fire escape with a single gunshot wound to the head. She was still breathing, but seriously injured. Patricia was then rushed to the hospital, but sadly succumbed to her injuries. Patricia's foster family and Rodney were all in the apartment at the time that Patricia got shot. Each of them claimed that they heard the shots, but did not see who the shooter was. Rodney claimed that he was asleep in an armchair in the living room when he was awakened by the sound of the shots. He then apparently walked to the fire escape and saw Patricia. The foster mother called the police after that. Investigators learned that Rodney possessed multiple handguns close to the time and had engaged in threatening behavior toward Patricia in the weeks before her life was taken. While many people were interviewed and leads were followed, no arrests were made and the case went cold. In 2020, the Middlesex County's DA's cold case unit reconstructed Patricia's position on the fire escape. The DA's office then wrote this in a statement. Based on the position of the entry wound and the downward trajectory of the bullet, the path of the bullet was consistent with having been fired by an individual standing in the area of the doorway to the apartment, where the victim had resided with her foster family and where Rodney had been staying that evening. Investigators then began re-interviewing witnesses and located a witness who had been out of the country for a while. That witness lived in the apartment just below Patricia's on the second floor. They said they'd been woken by a loud noise and immediately looked to the fire escape. They provided a description of the person they had seen there which was consistent with Rodney's appearance. They also said the man immediately retreated into the apartment and closed the door. With the new information, investigators went ahead and obtained a warrant from Malden District Court. With the help of South Fulton Police in Georgia, they arrested Rodney at his home in late September of 2021. He was arraigned in Georgia as a fugitive from justice and is being transported back to Massachusetts. Middlesex District Attorney Marion Ryan had this to say, after three decades, we have taken the first steps today to hold accountable the person we allege took Patricia's life. It is always with mixed emotions that we make these announcements, as we know this will not fill the void caused by the loss of a daughter, a sister, and a friend to many. I do hope, however, 
that it brings hope to some of the families who are still awaiting answers. This is a case that was solved not by new development in forensic science, but as a result of relentless investigative work and a change in circumstances for some parties involved. We will never give up on a case. This case is emblematic of that. We know, whenever we make these announcements, it's bittersweet. On one hand, we are finally able to hold someone accountable. On the other hand, it certainly brings back a well of memories, takes people back to probably what was one of the worst incidents in their lives. Investigators are now looking into the possibility that Patricia's foster family knew that Rodney took her life, but protected him for all these years. Not much is known about the next case. 48-year-old Jose Rafael Laro lived in Brooklyn, New York in 1993. On August 17th, he had an argument with an unknown man. The man then fatally shot Jose. Thanks to witnesses, the man was identified as 20-year-old Luis Carmona. Luis fled to the Dominican Republic before he could be arrested. Recently, members of the New York Police Department were able to track down Luis's location. With the help of the local government and the FBI, Lewis was arrested. He was then extradited to New York in February 2021. It has not yet been made public why the two men were arguing that fateful day.